Hey everybody, so welcome to this video on moon bats. Uh, I got a special one for you. Um, a while ago when I was doing my starter delete on the uh, XS650, uh, I was trying to think of what else I could do with this channel that would be like cool and fun and uh, I was like, oh, maybe I'll go check out different people's shops and see what's going on. Well, a buddy of mine, Dan, runs a Instagram account called Rebuilt One. Um, he's a historian. I, I think he, he does other things with his, like, real life. Uh, but in his spare time, he runs a... He, he's collecting history about Quebec motorcycle culture, um, which is super deep and long and pretty cool. Uh, but we're going to talk with him today about his collection, uh, see what he's got for us, see what he's going to show us, and just go from there. Si vous parlez en français, je vais mettre les sous-titres dans YouTube, so you can figure out how to do that. I don't know how to do it, um, but there will be subtitles for this video in French. Uh, so here we go, let's see what Dan's got for us. All right, so I'm at Dan's house, or his secret cave, I guess. Um, and this is Dan, right here. Uh, I don't know how to do these interview things, so you're just gonna, we're gonna be winging it here. Oh, we're winging it. So Dan, yeah. tell me something. Yes. Who are you, and like, what, what are you doing? In life or in with this all this stuff? With all this stuff. With all this stuff. Uh, we can talk about life another I, time. Yeah. <laughs> I'm, just, I'm just a guy who who uh, who appreciates old stuff. Okay. Uh, who fixes old stuff. Okay. And, uh, you know, um, as far as the motorcycle thing came along, it's, you know, if we're talking specifically about the project that I'm, which is I'm assuming what we're yeah, moving towards. Yeah, that's what we're definitely it, what we're really talking about. It really goes back to... Uh, you know, being a kid who was always interested in the darker side of the world, uh, you know, um, my projects in school were on gangsters and the mob, okay. as opposed to other kids were writing about, you know, uh, their dad, the firefighter. <laughs> you know, the biker stuff kind of came along <clears throat> slowly as I was always interested in, uh, you know, kind of underground stuff okay. and, and different types of... Uh, Nay or do wells, as they say. <laughs> uh, I guess the the you know the biggest influence uh, or the the when I started to really pay attention was in the nineties when yeah. we had the huge biker war here, which yeah. everyone knows about. You know, a hundred bikers died. Yeah, uh, it was serious business. Every day, shit was blowing up. People yeah. were dying every day. You couldn't read a paper without it. That's when you really start to notice. Yeah, that you know. Yeah, there's there's bikers here and they're serious. Yeah. Um, but you know, it kind of just, I still have news clippings from back then. Yeah. I, I just kind of, it kind of came and went, you know, yeah. that, that went away. Uh, I kept, you know, played rock and roll for years. Yeah. Uh, so remained a dirt bag. <laughs> <laughs> you know, pretty much. This is what I've looked like since I was 12. Went from skateboards to, you know, yeah. to guitars, yeah. you know, to motorcycles. It's just, it's kind of seems like, oh, follow, <laughs> everyone I know pretty much follows that same path. All right. Tell us a bit about how, uh, got here. how you got here. Where... What made you really like dig into the club side aside from like like how far back are you looking? What's your project? Let me start. I mean, over. Yeah, uh, okay. like what is your project? Well, to kind of to kind of tie into what I was saying, basically, yeah. I guess the the whole point was that the the shit that happened in the nineties yeah. piqued the interest, but I went on to other things okay. in my life. So it was like it was always there, but it, that died down, and yeah. then the whole scene kind of died down. Yeah. Right? I mean, um, by by chance, yeah. Essentially, I was out picking, yeah, at a flea market, and um, you know, always, you know, this stuff's always in the back of my mind, yeah. yeah. Always, but I essentially was introduced yeah. by a seller to another guy who happened to be a member of uh, of a club called the Black Spiders, okay, which I didn't even know existed. You knew nothing about it, yeah. Uh, again, tying this in is because this is where it really, you know, started to pique uh, my interest was the the fact that. I was like, what's this? And then 
start talking to the guy, you know, he's telling me about this, that, and the other. Um, and I was just starting to get the, the ball rolling because I'd been collecting uh, vests. Yeah. Um, which are not here, the ones yeah. at my shop, which okay. are all U.S. clubs. Oh, yeah, okay. I'd had those for, you know, those go back at least 10 years plus okay. that I've, I've had those. Oh, okay. Or I've been collecting them. You know, they were kind of actually just by, by well, the first one popped up on eBay. Yeah. This was back when a lot of them were coming out of the woodwork on yeah. eBay. A lot, there was a lot of fakes, you know, and I just ended up kind of like, I was like, that's cool as shit. Yeah. It you just know? started, so it started because it was like, cool, it was related to bikers, and you were just like as far as right, yeah, as yeah. far as yeah as far as the the vest, I was like that's and I, and I guess it also relates to the uh, I collect stuff. Yeah, you obviously like, you're not just like <laughs> no. I mean, I've always collected stuff, and I've always collected obscure stuff. Yeah, I don't collect comics. Yeah. I don't collect you know. I don't. I collect stuff that you can't find yeah. or is very hard to find, no matter what it is. I'm I'm attracted to it instantly. Yeah. So that's so this was an extension of that. Yeah. Cool bikers. Vest, yeah. some guy's whole life yeah. is in that piece of denim, etc., yeah. etc. Et so, yeah. you know, cut to a few years later, uh, I'm interested in the subject, I meet this black spider, um, and we hit it off, start chatting, yeah. and then he starts rattling off all these names. Whoa, okay. Just like, so of he's like, just <laughs> like, oh, he's a party with these guys, and I'm just like, Trying to absorb it, trying yeah. to like remember, you know, the the names of these clubs, and, and a lot of them are English names yeah. said by you know French guys, French like Quebec guys yeah. with thick accents. So yeah. I'm like, what was that again? Yeah. <laughs> you, know? Uh, you know, so uh, it it took a while. I met him, you know, I've I've since you know created a friendship with him. Yeah. I've gone to his place, you know, he's given me stuff, etc., etc., etc. So it it kind of just went from there. Yeah. I was I was interested, uh, and then and that's where I started to realize that there was far more out there uh, yeah. than just what you read in the newspaper. Yeah, yeah exactly. No one knew about this stuff. This is all oral tradition too, right? This exactly. is like, that's yeah. all it is. And the only way you're going to learn about this stuff exactly. is by talking to people. There was... Because no one's writing this down in their journal. Like, we don't have a Mother Ruth in Quebec. Exactly. As far as we know. There is, yeah. There's, <laughs> there's, I mean, there's a lot of, there's actually, I've met quite a few interesting women who, yeah. who took a lot of great pictures and yeah. great stories and, and followed their, their husbands or boyfriends. Um, that's a whole other yeah, side that I, would, I am yeah. starting to dig into as well, yeah, yeah. you know, parallel to the guys, because they were obviously not full club members, yeah. but were very much Involved. there for everything. Yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah. And documented, you know, such as, as you said, Mother Ruth yeah. and, and other women yeah. who've done that other, you know, throughout all clubs. Yeah, yeah, for uh, sure. Um, I do have a question for you. So what era are you really focusing on? Because I know that, like, you know, the American club history goes back to the 40s and 50s. Yeah. Yeah. And so I mean, how far back, I mean, it goes back further, but If you like, talk like the AMA stuff, yeah. like the riding clubs. Obviously, riding if you're clubs, talking yeah. more of the outlaw, yeah, the outlaw clubs style, and style, you know, not necessarily the one percenters, but the, the guys who followed that type of mantra. Right. Live your life and fuck yeah, the world. Yeah, exactly, exactly. <laughs> I'd call them more of the FTW type yeah. of, of bikers as opposed to the one percenters. Yeah, exactly. So, that, which is... I mean, to me personally, that's the more appealing well, that's, yeah. lifestyle of the like, I'm not out there to like make money doing things. I just want to live my life. I want to ride. Yeah. And that's it. Yeah. That, that's what I'm all about. And, 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 and like, avoid authority as often as possible. I, I have a problem with authority as it is. So. <laughs> we, we all seem to tend to gravitate towards that. So it, it appeals very much to that sensibility of not wanting to live by all the yeah. never-ending rules yeah. that keep getting compounded. So, uh, to answer your question, yeah. basically, uh, as I met, you know, so all the history that we know that's been written in these books and all yeah. this stuff is mostly, uh, as far as Quebec at least, is mostly, you know, the big clubs, and they are, you know, mid 80s and yeah. beyond. That's for the books and everything that's like... That's everything that, yeah, you know, all those Hells Angels really books that were written by those crime guy, you know, yeah. crime reporters and things like that, they all focus on, obviously, the criminal aspect, but yeah. also that period. Yeah. For me, I was like, well, that's been done, yeah. first so of all. Everything's, yeah. You can we buy all those about books. It. You can buy all those <laughs> books, you can watch those videos, yeah. it's fine. You know, that's, that's one part of it, yeah. that's that part of it. I wasn't interested. Okay. I wanted to tell the story of the Black Spiders yeah. and all the guys that were around them. So, again, your question... 50s to early 80s. Okay. So, it, you know, because some of the clubs uh, that were started in the, you know, early 70s yeah. dragged into the very early 80s, yeah. then things turned sour yeah. and they all disappeared. Yeah. So I have to kind of cover that. But okay. the 50s, 
uh, like that club. So you just pointed to this up here. So this is the 1950s, you said? Yeah, 1955. 1955. This is, this is a club called the Raiders. They were actually out of uh, St. Anne de Bellevue, which okay. is on the western tip of the island of Montreal. All right. So the western tip of the island of Montreal. So basically, out in, at this time, was essentially farmland. Yeah, it was farms. It was farm. There was a little yeah. tiny downtown uh, St. Anne de Bellevue. Okay. Um, the, you know, so this, uh, kind of, I was, I knew there was early clubs that kind of followed that whole wild ones, you yeah. know, as you can see, it's, you know, yeah, it's a leather, it's a leather jacket, it's a leather jacket with, with a patch on it, you know, uh, and so it, it definitely, that's where it starts. Yeah. That's where it started for all, most of these guys, yeah. even as they were young, uh, you know, teenagers yeah. and going into young adulthood, they were definitely, they'd seen that movie, Yeah, you know. Um, or a lot of them had, so there started, you know, there's a whole, the, the book really goes deep into a lot of stuff that people don't know about, um, what they called, uh, the, the vest de cuir. Okay. The leather vests, the leather vests. of Montreal yeah. and surrounding areas, which were basically street gangs, yeah. uh, that had, a few of them had motorcycles. Yeah. They were kind of like, they took the style of the wild ones, but most of them didn't have motorcycles because they're, you know, living in Verdun yeah. or Villamar or St. Henry, things like that. So they couldn't really, but they were very much, the aesthetic was 100%. Uh, so, so it's funny because I I was once doing a construction job with this guy mm -hmm. and we were taking a trip to the dump because that's what you do in construction. You're like, all right, we're driving to the dump. That's, yeah, yeah. Like, <laughs> that's it. Well, get um, and he was talking about how when he was a kid, he was in the Vikings club. And I don't know what neighborhood they were in, but he was like, every weekend we'd go out and we'd get into fights with other clubs. You'd meet at the park, you'd fight, and then you'd go have a beer afterwards. Right. That was like what you did. And this was in the 50s or 60s? Like this was probably in the 60s and 70s. That... And, and like he was like, if you wanted to have a good fight, you'd go to NDG. You yeah. wanted to have a better fight, you'd go to Point St. Charles. And those were like the two areas where the toughest clubs of like these young guys were like hanging out. It's funny that you mentioned that because the Vikings actually have an association with the Popeyes. Yeah, and that's what he said. He's like they were they were kind of like there. There was a lot of uh, like the, what they call the BCs, the bicycle yeah. clubs. Yeah. So they were kind of a mixture of street gangs. Yeah. Bicycle guys on bicycles, guys on foot. Yeah. And sometimes you know like one or two had motorcycles. Yeah. So the Vikings were very much tied to that evolution of teenagers wanting yeah. to become bikers. I think he must he must have been an early teenager at this time. He wasn't that old, but like old enough to have like hung out with these guys and been like Popeyes were tough, and if you wanted to fight, you'd go fight the Popeyes, even though they were friends. Yeah. they'd still fight. Yeah, like exactly. that's just like it was like that's what you do. It's like wrestling. That's <laughs> like, what you do in the, in the inner city to have fun because yeah. you're blowing off some steam. And this wasn't yeah, it wasn't like knife fights, chain fights. No, it no, was no, like no. fist fights, and you like I said, they go out and have a beer afterwards, or they just sit there in the park and have a beer. <laughs> exactly. Uh, that kind of so it, you know things evolved into as you're saying the Raiders, yeah. which was a was a true motorcycle club. Okay. Uh, and just a side note to the the re uh, this I got. Several years ago, yeah. from a from picker friend. Oh, okay. Who was like, "Hey, dude, I found something." Because they all know that I'm into this shit. Okay. So I'm, I've been working on this project, so he's like, "Hey, I found something for you." Yeah. Picked it out of an old, like an old couple. I guess they either passed away. Oh, or, okay. So it came out of the closet. He saw it. He was like, "That's something." Yeah. That's something. I got. Call me up. Get it. We made a deal. Yeah. You know, uh, and a few years ago, because of my Instagram account, yeah, um, a guy sent me a, wrote a message saying. That was my father's club. Wow, okay. Just so, out of the blue. That's awesome. So the power of the internet does work. Yeah. You know, it's not... That's how you connect. I mean, that's that's what that's the way to do things now. So I shot him a message. Yeah. Didn't hear from him for months. Yeah. I was like, okay. Yeah. Too bad. That lead is gone. Then all of a sudden, he sends me another message. Yeah. And then he's like, that's crazy. You have this, blah, yeah. blah, 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 go on, on. And then we start talking. He starts giving me, filling me in the whole history of his dad. Wow, okay. Uh, uh, you know, his that's dad came great. from overseas. His dad designed the patch. That's awesome. Uh, and, um, you know, and said, I've got photos yeah. of my dad on his bike with his patch oh, back nice. in the fifties. That, that, so the fifties is where yeah. it kind of starts to evolve. And then you come along with the, with the sixties, yeah. you know, rolls around. There's obviously an influence from California. Yeah. Because that is where it all started. Yeah. 
Uh, There's you know, no denying that. I mean, or I shouldn't say that's not where it all started. That's where it really got like rolling. It took it, it took, took off. off. Yeah, yeah. And, it, and it evolved. It really set the, the tone yeah. because there was, you know, the McCook Outlaws are, are from 1935. Okay. And what became the Outlaws? Yeah, that's Chicago. Yeah, that's not SoCal. Yeah, you know, there's but it's a, also and it's not far either. Like Yonkers, the Yonkers Club is, is closer than yeah. <laughs> California. You know, the, the Yonkers Club is in New York. Yeah. there was clubs that kind of went from the AMA style riding clubs yeah. and started to evolve themselves. California undeniably influenced yeah. that. Um, so 60s rolls around here. We start getting that influence. From what I gather though, it was quite minimum. Oh yeah. And I think what what influenced obviously, you know, makes more sense. What influenced here yeah. was the East Coast clubs. Okay. There are a ton of clubs in Mass, New Hampshire. Yeah, no, it's uh, it's it, rich and it, thick. It very. There you know, are so many. There are so many. That so, are still around, too. Yeah. Like, that's the thing. They're like, And they were there. close. And the clubs from, from Quebec would go to, 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 you know, to the East Coast okay. and vice versa. So yeah. they met each other. So, you know, mid-60s, when the Popeyes got founded yeah. and, you know, and those earlier clubs got founded, the Devil's Disciples, they were actually, they were already had an association with clubs that existed. Yeah. Uh, like another club called the Vikings from yeah. Connecticut, uh, the Victors. I think Vikings in Connecticut are still around too, right? Probably. There are yeah. several of those clubs that still exist. Okay. Uh, so there's definitely that kind of, um, you know, drag over of, yeah. of U.S. And I would say that we, Quebec pulled more influence from East Coast clubs. Yeah. That probably got their influence from the West yeah. Coast. It's, so, I mean, it's also just American culture as a whole influences Canada as a whole. Yeah. And therefore, like, you know, and when you, like, just pare it down, it's going to be, you know, the East Coast influences the East Coast of Canada yeah, and absolutely. the West Coast, the West Coast of Canada. And just, like, even the way people carry themselves is differently. It's just the way they talk. And all of this stuff is, like, it's all, like, borders aren't real. No. <laughs> like, but it makes, it makes sense that Quebec guys would be more influenced by guys that were, you know, a few hundred miles away. Yeah, as opposed than, to... Yeah. You know, three thousand miles away on it's the harder, other end. It's harder to take a trip to California than it is to take a trip to like New York, yeah, or there, Boston. And there's also yeah. the language barrier. Yeah, the that language would be another thing huge, that, yeah. that made it very difficult for uh, for these guys to communicate. There yeah. wasn't many that could speak English. Yeah, so, yeah, especially when you're talking about like back then. The, I, I feel like Quebec wasn't as anglicized it was as not. it is now. No, I mean, there was a percentage, but it yeah. was, you know, especially these guys are all from rural parts. Yeah, they're there's, not, there's they're not no like, English speakers. They're not from the urban hubs. <laughs> no, in, in, you know, in Riviere du Loup, there's yeah. no guys speaking English at that time. Yeah. Uh, so that presented its own set of challenges, but yeah. they overcome it because it's like, you're like, motorcycles, yeah. women, beer. Yeah. We, we know those three words, and we share them in common. Pretty fucking easy to, to get yeah, along, you know, exactly. and to, to cross that, that barrier. Yeah. It starts in the late 50s, yeah. mid to late 50s, because that's where the birth of it. Some of those yeah. guys ended up becoming uh, part of the earlier um of the earlier clubs yeah. that formed, like this one this here. Hot Pistons. So this is the one you're talking about, Hot Pistons. The hot Pistons. This yeah. this club uh, was one of the biggest at the time. Yeah, uh, they were they predate the Popeyes by about five years. Okay, they predate everyone. Okay, because essentially this club formed out of clubs like that. Okay, out of clubs like the Raiders, but which, like the and the, the Vikings and the Vikings, like that, yeah. you know, okay. club, clubs that were the 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 leather vest clubs. Yeah. They were just starting to get into motorcycles. Yeah. So this, from what I understood, told by several of the old timers, yeah. is basically it was created out of a few of those small street clubs yeah. that wanted to form something more motorcycle related. Okay. Like a hundred percent. Yeah. So this, they, these guys date back, if you really want to go back, probably to about 58, 59. Okay. This is the period where it's not yet... The three patch, yeah. You know the this, uh, is, the this is, but most of these clubs at the time had one patch, yeah. Even in California, yeah. It, it was it was the the three the three set rocker you know set had had not come around. Yeah. So this is in super good shape. Yes. And this is old hope. Like what? This, what, this, what yeah. Is, this is. Uh, tell this, us a bit about this. This this one came. Uh, I I got this from. The original owner, yeah, uh, his name was Keith Stewart. Okay, he used to own. He he started uh, Tatouage Artistique. Oh, okay. This was Keith's vest. Oh wow! Uh, I had no idea. I spoke to Keith. He's passed on. Yeah. He, he died last year. Okay. Um, so this was his. He was a member from about sixty 
65 yeah. to 67. Okay. So, so was, this dates from 65. Okay. Um, so yeah, I mean, he was only a member for two years. He was only a member, he got, you know, as many guys were, yeah. they, you know, they moved on, they got yeah. married, they had jobs, you know, he was like, it was fun, but I ended yeah. up having to work nine to five. Yeah, there, I mean, there are very few who are lifers. Exactly, right? they're, exactly. They're very, very few, and those guys are respected because it's yes. a hard life. Exactly. Exactly. <laughs> exactly. So they had to move on. Yeah. Uh, you know, so this is why he was, but there was a lot of guys that were in it sometimes for years, sometimes for months. Yeah. Keith was there for a few years. Okay. Uh, I became the caretaker of this. Yeah. Uh, just, just so we're clear, if you guys are wondering where all this shit came from. Yeah. About 75% of the stuff was given to me. Okay. I don't... This isn't stuff you find on eBay. Yeah. You find a lot of butt bike stuff. Yeah. Quebec stuff. No. Never. 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 Yeah. I've never seen a single thing pop up. Yeah. Uh, and I just have a weird, um, because I create friendships with these yeah. guys. I have this a weird is... thing about asking them to buy their stuff. Yeah. It doesn't. It makes you know, sense. Everything that that means really anything to me was given to me. Yeah. This, like, yeah. you know, this is a, 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 you know, a heritage moment. Yeah. And it's something that you're, that, that I'm, you know, will take to the grave and hopefully someone yeah. will carry it carry on. Carry it on past your, so that, you know, have these, its own building or something one day. These things are all trying to be preserved. Yeah. These are, these are artifacts. Yeah. No matter what, they could be, you know, it could be a hockey jersey. Yeah. It's like, you got it, you got it, this stuff disappears. Yeah. So yeah. try to keep a few of these things yeah. alive. Exactly. A lot of this stuff does go away. So, um, what? We're talking a lot about all these things, like, what was the first piece that really, that was Quebec-related, that really, like, spoke to you? Like, what was the first thing that you got from, either from a person, or from picking, I mean, or... I'm trying to, I'm trying to think, like... Not the oldest, because obviously the Raiders is going to be yeah, like, that, I mean, your it, oldest piece. I, it's, that's a good question. I, I'm, I'm, what the first piece that I came across, um... Is it's hard to say because at the time when I started working on this project, I was slowly getting access to people's collections, yeah. so I would see their stuff. Oh yeah, okay, so you'd see it. But I wouldn't, would, but I didn't. I never. First of all, you never ever ask them to buy things no, no. the yeah. first time you meet them. No, you'll never meet them again. Yeah, <laughs> you have to, and you have to cultivate. You know, uh, you're develop. You're these people. Are your friends. Yeah, you're it's cultivating like, friendships with them, and you're, you're developing and you, relationships. It's they, not, you don't want to come out of the gate. You know, trying to be like, I just want to. I want your stuff. And yeah. I want your. I want your memories. Yeah, like, I want to know what you know. I would much rather hear a story. Then walk away with a trinket. Exactly, because like. the, the, you know the, the trinket is is cool because it probably relates to the story, but yeah. the story is what you went there for. Yeah. So yeah, so uh, basically, you know, this evolves into the later yeah. '60s, um, and then that's when things really start to become um, the FTW style. Yeah. The the the. These, Sleeping these in the guys dirt, partying in the woods. Yeah, the, these riding, guys so like the like the Cyclones out of Tetford Mines, which is another club that was formed in '61. Yeah, the, probably the other earliest club. Okay, uh, I've met many of those guys, and they were you know super accommodating. Yeah, um, but again, they their original patches were actually painted on back of leather oh, wow. jackets. So those are yeah, those, those won't last. Those are those are gone, and yeah. then they then they got a a, a one piece patch like this. Like this okay, and then they evolved into the the, the, the three, three piece. piece. Three piece. So they, uh, so they had their they had their evolution from the early '60s into you know they lasted into the um, into the early '80s. Okay. Um, so um, so there's that whole kind of period where it goes from this to what we know more as outlaw style, yeah. okay. um, and that's where things start to get a little heavier. Yeah. But a little cooler because that's when the choppers come around. Yeah. We got to point out that these guys were riding BSAs, yeah. Triumphs. Yeah, it's funny, even on this patch right here, right? Amazing. Norton. It's a BSA, a Norton, and a Triumph. Yeah. That, so, that defines it perfectly. Yeah, rolling the, Ventures. That club started in the mid 60s. So, this is a mid 60s club from Bay Como, which is north and east of, yeah. uh, of Montreal. Harleys didn't come around till. Mid seventies. Oh, really? Early to mid seventies. Okay. Most of these guys, who all now, if they're still alive, swear by Harley. Yeah. At the time, <laughs> wouldn't fucking ride a Harley if you bought it. Yeah, because they broke down. They were like, these are pieces of shit. <laughs> my BSA, my CB, my CB seven fifty will outrun yeah. anything that you have. Yeah. More horsepower, 
lighter bikes. We're not going to get into run the, forever. Yeah, we're not going to get into the Harley debate. You know, yeah, I would be an idiot if I said that. Yeah. Wearing a Harley shirt. Yeah. <laughs> you know? I mean, I have a Harley and I have a Yamaha. You know, One of them blew up. <laughs> exactly, exactly. And and it's not the Harley. <laughs> it's not the Harley. But, so, <laughs> but yes, they they're anyways. That's a whole. Yeah, other, that's, that's, whole like, other that's not what we're talking about. Right? No, no. But the, but that does you know at the time. So these guys had had were still rolling you know on smaller bikes. Yeah. Uh, British bikes, early Japanese bikes. Yeah. Which they swore by and still think of fondly, mm -hmm. even though they may be riding you know a Road King now. Yeah. Back then they're like I really loved my CB. Yeah. You know I really loved my uh, you know my Bonville. Yeah. It was it was what they were into. It was what was available. It was cheap. And that's it was I mean fun. I mean at the end of the day that's like I'm a firm believer in ride what you can. Like I don't care if you're riding a new bike an old bike. If you're riding, that's really what it comes down that's to. It. You're, yeah. And if you're not an asshole, that's really like, <laughs> those, are the, those are the two criteria. Ride what you want, don't be an asshole. <laughs> pretty much, pretty much. That's a good way to live by because uh, all the rest of it is uh, can yeah. be tiring. Let's look at some stuff. Look at some stuff. So, what do you want to pick at? something. Uh, I don't know, man. So, so I see like off camera here. I see you've got a bunch of like small patches. Let's let's yeah. look at these okay. small well, these, patches. These are actually not, not these ones. Yeah, yeah. The, like there, I see moto patches, and then I see a picture of a bike here. This is a sweet little iron head. It's a little iron head. It's zoomed. It, this is like, it's a blown up photo. It's, so this, you, you this, get what you got. This is the original photo. Oh yeah. Okay. Um, this dates probably you know seventy five, I think. Okay. Around there. This is belonged to a guy who I don't know who his name is. Okay. Uh, from Bois de Filion. Which is like Terrebonne, Mascouche kind of area. Yeah. Um, oddly enough, Facebook Marketplace. Oh yeah. So I just kind of popped up and it was like old picture of Harley and I was yeah. like, okay, cool. And then when I got to the guy's house, I knew him from the flea market. Oh yeah. Okay. I knew that. I knew the stuff. The guy yeah, was like, yeah, yeah. Hey. he's like, yeah. So anyway, I just thought <laughs> it was cool. It's the original print. Yeah. You can tell it was enlarged, or probably yeah. from like a small. It's probably like, like a small a, one. Yeah. So you well, don't have the negative of this. this I don't have the negative. This is the only thing that yeah. exists. Okay. Uh, this came. The guy pulled it right out of the guy's garage. Oh, awesome. Uh, so this is awesome. This sat in someone's garage. Yeah. This was his like. This was his private pride and joy. joy. <laughs> he built this, you know, in the yeah. in the mid seventies. Uh, it's it kind of speaks volumes yeah. as to how uh, you know people were the bikes had evolved. Yeah. Uh, obviously. It's I mean, this bike. It's kind of people, perfect. Yeah. No <laughs> one would like. No one would shake their head at this and be like, "Oh, that piece of shit." Like this, even today, this exactly. bike. I mean, we don't know how it runs, but it I, that doesn't matter. I mean, it's an iron head. It doesn't run. Exactly. So like, <laughs> it's, 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 part, it's on a motion foil. It's strictly just sitting there. But, and I say that in jest. Like yeah. I, I, there's nothing I want more than a shitty iron head. Right. <laughs> better act fast because they're going up the price. I know they are. It's, it's, it's unfortunate. But. So, so this is something that I just kind of was like, this perfect. Again, my focus is obviously entirely yeah. Quebec. Yeah. Um, this so is, yeah. This, this, is, this was it. Okay. This was. I was like, this is cool. Uh, you know, it's a it's a chopper. It's a beautifully like mounted uh, bike. Yeah. Everything that you could think of uh, that you could put on a bike is there. Yeah. Pretty That's much. It. Yeah. So it's like I was like, cool. You know, uh, sold. Yeah. And uh, I wish I knew more. I wish I knew who the guy was. Yeah. I wish I knew the story. I don't. I just know where it came from, and that's it. Yeah. So this was, you know, again, this ties in nicely with the with how things were starting to evolve. People were starting to be able to get p parts yeah. and starting to, you know, crazy paint jobs yeah. and things like that. It's harder to see here, but you know, he's got all this like kind yeah, of flowering, like, like yeah, lacing, like, lacing lace work. on the frame, and yeah. it's molded. It's yeah. like. There's a lot going on here that exactly. like you know the, there's a lot of time spent on this yeah, bike. Yeah, everything's polished, you know. Yeah, everything's mirror. polished. This is the opposite of my bikes. Exactly. I like a fancy paint job, but I am not spending. I I've learned my lesson about trying to polish shit. It is not worth it for me. <laughs> I prefer to ride my bike than. Yeah. And how many times I've washed my bike? Yeah. Zero. Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> Zero. <laughs> All right, everybody. So that's gonna be part one of this video. Uh, I have a probably another part, maybe two more parts. Uh, we talked for like two hours about all this stuff. So just stay tuned. Um, part two will be coming soon. Uh, but, I, you know, it takes a long time to edit these edit videos. I've never done anything like this before. Let me know if you like it. Uh, like the video, subscribe. Ask any questions in the comments. Uh, and make sure to check out... Dan's Instagram. It's rebuilt one on Instagram. Uh, I'll put a link in the description of the video. So 
see you next time, I guess.